Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the channel. I know it's been quite a while since my last upload, but today's video is gonna be pretty good because I got a lot of new parts for the 330 and I'm gonna be installing an entirely new CCV system. So hopefully that will clear my engine codes. I've had the P0171 and P2195 for the longest time now, but as you can see, it is cold as hell out here. So the first thing I wanna do is pull the 330 into my garage. Well, actually before I do that, let me show you guys some of the new parts that I have for the 330. So you might have seen this rear end in one of my last videos. This is an M3 rear end E46 that I picked up for $500 for this whole thing. Now it's in the garage so you guys can see a better look at it. Here's the subframe and the differential in the middle. It's got the full M3 brakes on it. So far, all I've ordered for this is the differential fluid. There's still a bunch more stuff I have to order, like differential bushings and subframe bushing. It's a little bit more intense of a swap than I expected. So that probably won't be happening for at least another week or two, maybe. I wanna do some other stuff first namely these catless headers. So I actually picked these up on eBay for only $97. And then as you guys probably know, you have to pick up these angled O2 uh, extenders, which was another like 20 bucks. So all in all, it's only like $110 for these. Now I'm pretty sure I will not have to weld the actual angled um, O2 sensor because it looks like it's low enough to actually clear, but I will have to weld the flanges at the end because they're the opposite way. What's gonna happen is this O2, um, I mean, excuse me, this exhaust flange is gonna have to get cut off, uh, rotated like 90 or 180 degrees, and then welded back on, which shouldn't be too hard, shouldn't be too expensive, it's just kind of annoying. And then I took a quick look under my car already, and it seems like the exhaust bolts aren't too rusted, so hopefully I should be able to get them out pretty easily. So I'm just waiting on my uh, secondary air pump um, plate to arrive from ECS tuning because I'm gonna take out the secondary air pump when I do that. Uh, I don't want like a massive vacuum leak and I don't really know how to make my own so I just ordered one off ECS tuning. It was only like 12 bucks. So once I have that, I can do the eBay headers install. But today's video is all about the CCV. So I ordered this kit off of FCP Euro a while back. This is the cold weather kit. So all of the tubes have this like insulation on them and the actual CCV itself is this is in this huge uh, foam encapsulation. But it comes with all of these various different hoses, a bunch of different gaskets. I think this one's for the throttle body. I'm not sure what these are for, but I'm sure I'll find out. So let's go ahead and pull the car in now and look under the hood. Okay, so this is not gonna be like the most in-depth install video. Um, I pretty much learned how to do this from the 50s kid on YouTube. So if you guys really wanna know like all the steps, all the bolts you gotta take off, go check out his video. I'm gonna be doing the method where you don't have to take the intake manifold off because it's a lot easier and you can actually um, get it out pretty easily. There's enough room in there. So basically to take off the CCV, what you gotta do is take off the usual suspects like the air box and the MAF, uh, the front air vent. Um, we may or may not have to take off the cabin air filter I'm not sure um, just because it's farther back in the engine the CCV is actually up here But then once we do that we're gonna have to take off like the diesel valve throttle body dipstick tube Then we should be able to start taking off the tube So I think this one right here is actually the only CCV tube that you can see with all the stuff installed in the engine This one right here it goes down here under the intake manifold and the CCV is like right in there So what I'm gonna do now is go through a time-lapse of just taking off the basic stuff on the top of the engine Bay. This is a Chucky Beat production. So it looks like we are going to have to actually take out the cabin air filter because I'm going to have to take off this engine cover right here because there's a CCV hose that goes along here. Haven't checked my cabin air filter in quite a while, but it looks like it's in pretty good shape, so I'll probably just leave it. I used to have a uh, electric ratchet, but I can't find it now, so I'm gonna have to do this whole install with hand tools, which kind of sucks. But I'll probably go to Harbor Freight at some time and pick up another one, which really sucks because I had a really nice Milwaukee uh, cordless. I bought it on eBay for only 80 bucks.
Okay, so now that all this stuff is off, we can get a much better look at the CCV system. So this is the hose that I was talking about right uh, here. And as you can see, it goes along here and then it loops around back into here. So this is the only reason why I had to take off that engine cover. And as you can see, if I can get a good shot at it, this hose looks pretty trashed. There's like a rip right here. It looks really like crumbly. There's just cracking all over it. Um, this one to the valve cover actually doesn't seem that bad. Um, but obviously I have the full kit, so I'm gonna replace it anyways. Um, but now, that we got all this stuff, maybe we can see the CCV under here? No, you can't really see it. I'm gonna have to remove some more stuff before we can really get a good look at it, but it is like basically right behind here. All right, I'm gonna take off the diesel valve now. It's just one plug right here, uh, and then two T40 bolts. So one of the hoses on this first intake boot after the mass airflow sensor is like really stuck on there and it looks kind of cracked too. So it's going to be really hard to get that off without breaking it. But I think there's a chance I might just be able to take off the hose clamp and then um, fold like that section of the hose back towards the back of the engine. And if that's the case, then I'm just going to do that just so I don't risk um, breaking it because I don't think I have a replacement hose for that one. I am we're gonna have to take off this little barrier here because the diesel valve doesn't appear to have enough room to come out. There we go. All right, this is out now. All right, so now we should be able to get off this uh, intake boot, hopefully. This is much, much easier to do this if you have um, a six millimeter socket for the hose clamps instead of using a screwdriver. If you gotta use a screwdriver, then you do like one turn and then readjust it every single time. It really sucks. Oh, there we go. All right, so I actually was able to get the uh, end of this hose off without cracking it at all, which is awesome. So this will be out of the way and I'll have a little bit more room to do what I need to do. This is where it starts to get a little bit more difficult because these hose clamps are way in the engine. It's really hard to get an angle on them. All right, so now the last hose is off. I'm actually gonna be replacing this one. And now I'm gonna take off this electrical harness box. It's three 10 millimeters. Uh oh. Uh oh. All right, now we're gonna take off this harness box right here. It's three 10 millimeter bolts. All right, so I'm gonna be honest, I got kind of lost, so I had to check on the DIY and see what I was supposed to do next. So I actually have to take out this dipstick tube, and you guys can't see, but there's a 13 millimeter bolt down here, and it attaches to the engine mount arm. So I'm gonna take that out, and then we can pull the dipstick out a little bit, and there's gonna be a hose connected to the back of it. That's the return hose from the CCV, and then we're gonna cut that hose off, and then we should be able to get the dipstick out. All right, got the bolt out. Fuck. All right, it's been a little while since the last clip. I actually lost one of the throttle body uh, bolts way down in the engine bay. So I had to actually jack the car up just to get it out, which was kind of a pain in the ass. But now that I got it, all we gotta do now is take off the idle control valve right here, and then we should be able to get to the CCV. All right, guys, so new update. The old CCV is out. I have it here right next to the new one, and the old one just looks so much crappier. Like, look at this hose. The entire insulation on it is totally cracked when you compare that with this one, which is the one that's gonna be replacing it. Brand new. Again, I have not got these in yet, obviously, so I don't know if this is gonna fix the engine code, but just looking at these hoses, they look totally trashed. I don't know how old these are. They've probably been in here for so many miles. So I think there's a really good chance that this will fix the engine code. And even if it doesn't, I'm still glad I did this just because these hoses are so crappy, they're bound to fail at some point. So even if they technically are good now, I think this is still gonna be a really good thing for the health of the car. It has been quite some time since the last clip, probably about two hours I've been trying to get the CCV in, but it is finally all in. I'm starting to button it up. We got the throttle body on now, the uh, electric harness right there, ICV, idle control valve is in, but it was just so hard to get the new CCV in with the winter weather stripping that I actually had to take it off one of the hoses. You can see it right here because it just would not fit. This was the first hose that you're supposed to put on that goes Let's see if I can show you. It goes to right here from the bottom. 
and it was just so hard because what you have to do is you have to like twist it around. It took me like two hours just to get that one hose in. But now we are starting to get towards the finish line. Um, just buttoning up a little bit more stuff. Got to do the DESA valve and then the air box and the MAF sensor. And then once that's all in, I should be able to start it up and see if the code goes away. All right, got the electric harness all hooked up. Uh, I'm going to take the tape, paper towel I put in the dipstick tube and take that out. And we are going to put a new O-ring on the dipstick and then put that back in. Here's the new O-ring. I got it in the uh, FCP Euro kit. I'll just slide that right on there. And I think the old one might still be stuck in the uh, engine bay, so I don't know what I'm gonna, how I'm going to get that out, but we'll figure it out. So I don't actually see any uh, um, gasket in there. And I try to feel it. Yeah, I don't feel it either. Oh wait, no, I got it. Here is the old gasket. Try to. It's kind of hard to find, but you got it now. All right, I'm gonna see if I can get this dipstick in now. It's got clips on it. You have to route some other hoses in there, and then we have to get the final um, hose from the CCV that has to connect to the end of the dipstick. All right, the dipstick is back in the hole now. Cables are tucked in. So now all I gotta do is bolt the 13 millimeter back on and then put the final uh, hose off of the CCV onto there. Okay, I just got the dipstick tube connected to the CCV tube. It was a lot harder than I thought. Probably would have gone better with some silicone grease, but it's in there. So now all I gotta do is um, bolt up the 13 millimeter to the um, engine mount. So it's actually the next day. I wasn't able to finish filming the install yesterday because my camera actually ran out of battery. But I got the full CCV installed in the car and it's running pretty good. One of the codes went away, but the second one actually came back, which makes me think that there is another problem in the car. But I'm going to actually start it up right now so you guys can hear it and see the codes on the cluster so you can see what I'm talking about. But uh, the rest of the install went pretty smoothly. Don't mind the uh, windshield washer light on here or the coolant light. Um, the coolant light actually is a little concerning, but it goes away after like two minutes when I start it up. So I don't know why it does that. If you guys have any ideas, let me know down in the comments. Um, but when I read the code on the service engine light, it's only the P0171 now, which means that the P2195 code went away. So I think there's another minor air leak somewhere in the car. Maybe it was from one of the, um, what's it called? The intake hoses isn't properly connected all the way. Um, but the car seems to be running fine. I can't really notice any differences. There's a um, small ticking noise coming out of the engine that I'll show you guys in a second, but I can't really tell if that was there before or not. So I'm gonna show you guys the engine now so you can see if you can hear it. So can you hear this ticking like coming right from here? So here's the engine bay all buttoned up. It sounds like there's a ticking coming from like the manifold, but I don't really know. But all things considered, I'm really happy with how the CCV install came out. If anything, it's good news that the engine light came back on and it was only one code this time. Uh, because that means at least we fixed one of them. Got to figure out what this second P0171 code is. We'll get to that in another video. But if you guys are new to the channel, consider subscribing for some more awesome BMW content. I have some more awesome videos planned, like the eBay headers install, which will probably come out sometime this week. So definitely subscribe if you're not already. And as always, thanks for watching.